All right, man, so look, I'm back at it again with another video. Now, I came across this video, but I had to bring a special guest with me today. Oh, no, man. Robert, known as ROB. Mm hmm. Back with another video with Jalen. Yes, sir. I'm about to get my views and my perspective on this video, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. I know this is John. Hold on, bro. <laughs> this is my whole <laughs> intro, bro. Like, what the world? <laughs> this is my whole game. But uh, we came across this video, right? This is do white people experience racism. Now, y'all know my point of views on this. Y'all know everything. So I decided to bring on somebody else who get who basically got the same point of views as me. But you know, he's a little older, so he got a little bit more wisdom. But we're gonna see his uh, respect to hit the like button, subscribe to my post notifications, follow your boy on Instagram, man. Follow your boy, ROB, man, on Instagram too. But without further ado, let's get it. Let's go. Trumped. White people also experience racism. Yes, they do. Nah, everybody, air, low key, everybody should step to the front, bro. Yeah. White people, see, that's the thing with racism. They say that, wait, it said only, do white people only experience racism? I think it was said do only white people. I think it was only. Also experience racism. White people oh, also, also experience racism, yes. Right, yeah. That's, yes, that's, everybody experience racism, bro. Any not all whites are racist. Thank you. See, I told you, I got the same point of view as I'm from the South, South, so. You're from the South, I'm what? from the South, so I've, I haven't necessarily experienced racism, but. I also know that not all white people are racist. Just that's, saying. Exactly. That's why I've been telling people that, bro. Not everybody is racist. Uh, not not every white people, uh, every white person is racist. But I've let's go ahead and get um, into it because this is you got one more thing. Nah, just, I got I've experienced some of the nicest white people just from where I'm from. So I just can't assume that they're racist. Oh, but I mean, just because they're nice doesn't mean that they're not racist. But then again, like I said, I mean, we're living in times now. You just don't know. So I just try to treat everybody the same so exactly i try not to come off as like disrespectful rude or exactly. how a lot of black people portray themselves exactly. i think racism is definitely not a one race against the other it, it goes always it's not it doesn't matter if you're white if you're black if you're asian it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you could you could experience racism no matter what exactly. color your skin is i think that People have a propensity to kind of have an aversion towards what's different from them. I've been called a cracker before. I've been told I was going to get beaten up because I was white. I would argue that on a systemic level, white people don't experience racism the same way a lot of other races experience racism. But I would say on an individual level, any group is capable of being racist towards another group as well. So the argument against this position frequently is that racism is a system, not a sentiment in the United States. And I agree with that really strongly, but at the same time, I'm Jewish and racially white and have definitely experienced racism, discrimination. Uh, the paradox is that most of that racism is coming from uh, white people or European society, white nationalism, et cetera, that's directed at Jews. So I'm Dane and I'm Jewish. I'm proud of being Jewish and being connected to an ancient religion and culture, but I, I'm not proud to be white, I would say. White privilege, I think, is an aspect of American society. I think it exists. When I go to a job interview, I don't have to worry about my hairstyle or the way I normally speak or my name. And that's something perhaps a black person would have to worry about. Can the that's not always the case, though. It's not. It, it, see, and that's, it that's, shouldn't be the case. People, people feel like that this is, I don't know what times do people think we live in, but I feel like a black person go to any job. It's a lot of black doctors. It's a lot of black uh, contractors. It's a lot of black everything. Black realtors, all that. I feel like any anybody can get a job because I believe that it is, I don't, is it illegal for think, like somebody to turn down a person because of their race? Or because of how they come yeah. or how they present things, that's yeah. that's illegal, right? Yeah, you can, you, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, people say, oh, well, a black person has to worry about this, has they to worry about that. They can't turn you down for, they say it in the, fine, in the fine print for a job. They can't turn you down from the, your, your race, religion, uh -huh. uh, what else? Uh, sexual orientation, things okay. like that. You know what I'm saying? They can't deny you a job because of that. 
and people feel like, oh, well, black people have to deal with this. Like, this is not the, this is not the 50s. This is not the 40s. This is not the 50s. Like, bro, black people are the, we, I believe that we are all equal in, in a way. You know what I'm saying? We all bleed the same. We all literally are equal in a way. You know what I'm saying? We may have our differences. We may have our different beliefs. We may have our different things. We may believe this and believe that. We may think this and think that. But at the end of the day, we are all equal in some type of way, bro. And you said something about uh, not having to worry about how his hair looks and things like that. No, I mean, just generally, when you go for a job interview or exactly. like anything, you will want to know. You will want to like. You will want to present yourself. Right? Like you will want to have a haircut. You exactly. will want to look some type that, of presentable. That has nothing to do with whether I'm black or white. Exactly. That's just I'm going for a job interview. I want to be the best in regards to how I look. You know, first impressions are everything. So first impressions like, are everything. Man. That's not even a black or white issue. Disagree a step forward. So I just want to say that I want to validate everyone's individual experiences. I do also believe that white people experience bias, prejudice, but the reason I did not step forward is because by definition, racism is tied to power and economics. You talked about systemic uh, discrimination. I don't feel white people experience racism by definition and by actual concept. What is the definition of racism and who wrote that definition? In the late 1500s, early 1600s, there was slavery. They started bringing over slaves, but there was really no... Con he has one simple question. Right, she, 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 he, see, he has one simple question. The definition of racism. What is the definition of racism? And, and who wrote the right? You going back in the 18, in the 16. Yes, I didn't ask for a whole. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, like simple, simple, cut and dry. Give me a simple, straightforward answer. <laughs> and she went over to the 15, and 16. We in 2022 concept of classifying people in terms of race it's just we're bringing these people over and they're slaves what ended up happening is some of the slave owners who were white started mixing with some of the slaves and now here you have these black people that look like the people that are owning things so they're like whoa, whoa, whoa. the theory of race was formed to classify a group of people who would be lesser than and have less economic power and this would be imposed against them for hundreds of years. So that has not been the white experience in this country, but it does not invalidate the things that white people experience. It's just not racism by definition. Is it prejudice? Is it bias? Is it wrong? Yes. Mine is simple. If one person treats another person differently <laughs> because of the color of their skin, to me, that's racism. I will tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. That's all you have to do. He just answered his own question. Answer his own question with just the definition. five seconds. I mean, Janet, she does have, you know, her She has facts. a point, but it's... All that, that's great. It was the one definition. Exactly. We just needed one definition. You Let know. me tell you something. White people, exp no matter what, I don't care what nobody say, white people, everybody experience racism. Mm. If you treat another person different because of their skin color, that is racist. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We all done did the same. We all done had our stereotypes about another person. We done did all that. But at the end of the day, if you treat somebody different because of them, the way they look because of their skin. Let me tell you something. They didn't ask to be black. They didn't ask to be white. They didn't ask to be Hispanic, Chinese. They didn't ask for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Their parents just came together and then boom, they came out the same skin tone. I mean, like, that's just, it's not our fault that we came out this way. You know, I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask to be black. Mm -hmm. I just hate the fact that people say white people don't experience racism. They feel like only black people do. This is not, you know what I'm saying? This is not that. And I can we, only imagine not a good job. Like, go ahead. I can only imagine what it's like for those who are in interracial relationships and then they have a child exactly. who sees both perspectives from a white point of view and a black point of view. So I can only imagine what they have to go through on a daily basis as well. It's crazy, I don't know. That I was stopped by the police plenty of times when I was a young man. And I will also tell you that I then decided to spend 35 years as a policeman. I'll tell you that I stopped lots of kids coming home from school. Depending on who it was that I stopped, the first thing out of their mouth would be, you only stopped me because I'm black. And I would say, you're driving a sports car with a back window that's this big, I can't see who's driving, and I stopped you because you're doing 95 and a 55. I had no idea who I was pulling over until I stopped you. Now, if I treat you differently because you're black, then I'm a racist. But if I write you the same ticket 
that I was going to write you before I knew who was behind the wheel, I'm not. So I'm glad you used that example, and I want to commend you for your service for our country. But I do but. want to, but I do want to say because I've actually taught classes for the LAPD and for their cadets about these issues. But what I can say, which is a, a statistic, and which is also a fact, is that 60% of our prison population is African American. Different issue. Uh, yes, but let me finish, please. Is African? She said 65. Wait, she said 65 of our of our. She um, said 60. 60, 60 to 65, something around it. But she was saying that it was mostly African Americans right. in jail, right? And like, but like he said, that's a totally different issue. But it's not even just a different issue. Think about it like this. Why do you think there's so many African Americans in jail? Why? Look at what we do. Look at the things that we do to get ourselves in those predicaments. I mean, bro, black people do the dumbest things ever. I mean, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I always say, in my, I said this in previous videos, I don't know if you've seen it, but I always say that I try to hold myself to a higher standard because I, a lot of black people ruin it for other black people. I don't want to go into stores and be viewed different because I'm black with tattoos. And there's a lot of guys out there that's black with tattoos, with dreads or low cuts or whatever that done, that done did some dumb things to one person that made them feel some type of way about all black people with tattoos and low cuts and dreads. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we, we, we get our own selves in jail. I mean, the black community is so separated, bro. There's no unity in the black community, there's none of that. We always try to save up for each other when it comes down to white people against us. But at the end of the day, I feel like we are, we are against each other. We're against each other in the black community. Like, it's more people, it's more black people against black people than white people against black people. Simple as that. And that's just a fact. In American Mills, right? When you go into a system and you are kept in that system and you're uh, cycled through probation and there is a systematic sequence of oppression, that's not happening to white males. So it's bigger than just the stop itself. It's the system. My name is Sierra. I'm an actor, a speaker, and a human rights activist. So I'm very proud to be African-American, to be black. The challenges that come with being black also being a black woman are very real. I'm at a place in my life where I'm acknowledging these things are real. Discrimination is real. The systematic oppression of black people is very real, but I will succeed in spite of that. The police force is foundationally racist. Wow. I want to start off by saying I don't think that every cop out there today is racist. Same. I yes. think there are a lot of them who are really doing good work. What I know from the establishment of the policing in the United States, that is directly from the slave catchers who were hired to catch runaway slaves and bring them back home. Yeah, I agree that. Okay, so what do we say for those black officers? who will pull over a black guy or who's already detaining a black guy and is treating him with the utmost disrespect in the world. So you're saying the person that's got pulled over is treating the black police officer the with black the- black officer is treating the person that they pulled over or detaining that person and treating them with the utmost disrespect. Then, then what are we talking about? Are we talking about the person, the individual, or are we talking about the whole force? I think she, well, she did say that she's not saying that every cop is out there, but I do think they're talking about the whole entire force. I think that, I think they're, or I actually don't even know, bro. I really believe that they was talking about the whole entire force. Oh, yeah, I, I, I imagine, I know that, but I'm saying, though, it's like, if you want to talk about the whole entire force being racist and things like that, then wouldn't we be racist against our own? Or not even necessarily racist against mm -hmm. our own. What, what is that, what is that being... What is all of that being uh, aimed at in regards to our own being a certain way towards our own brother? If we're, if we're talking about policing in our right. neighborhoods and we're being aggressive, disrespectful, I've seen it in videos. It's not even a white cop, he's just standing there. The black, the black guy is just, Go do on. this, do that, no, 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 I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? It's in videos, look it up, it's on YouTube, whatever, but that's true. It's like, if we're talking about becoming a black officer in a police force, and we're talking about making a difference, making a change, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, that's come true. on, man. Like, I never on. understand that, bro. That's definitely. All cops aren't racist. I had plenty of um, interactions with police that were fine, but you know, I was told by a, a former police officer who was, you know, a cop who decided he didn't want to do that anymore that, you know, the training is pretty much specialized for only colored people, especially black people that if you're around them, they're the most dangerous, so you have to act in certain uh, situations or react in certain situations, you know? I, I think I just really want to emphasize that I really think that there are some officers uh, who are white that don't even believe that they are doing anything that may be racially motivated because they're simply doing what they were taught to do. I come from a police family, and I like to add, they do offer diversity trainings in the academy. So either it needs to be more extensive, or maybe we need to take it a step back and fix the selection process, because that process could be inherently racist. Hello, my name is Nia, and I am black. I'm proud of my race because when I look back historically at what people of my heritage have gone through and to see where we are now it's remarkable and it definitely pushes me to continue to be resilient and innovative as they were historically people formed groups villages some people were hunters some people were farmers and then you had whoever was going to protect the group and over hundreds of years, thousands of years, whatever it is, that's how we wind up having cops, firemen, armies, and navies. Community policing as a theory is a good idea. As a practice, it has some hiccups. When I show up at your house because you and your husband got into it and he beats you up and I'm friends with him, so do I want to take him to jail? He's my friend. Or I live in the same neighborhood and I go deal with some guy who's a really bad dude and he says, I know where you live, I know where your kids are. So to some degree, we have to have a little separation. This is gonna get into a hot button topic, but I will tell you that you know when I watched the uh, horrible video of George Floyd, I will tell you that I can justify many of the things that happened, but I cannot justify nine minutes on his neck or back. But what I can also tell you is I, as a policeman, and this is my personal opinion only too, the officer who was on him for nine minutes, he probably spent too much time in the same neighborhood dealing with the same problems over and over again that he became jaded. Isn't that what being a police officer is? Yeah. It's a social That's service job. job. Yeah. And you're assigned to that district of that community. But I think you need to move around so that you get to see other things. You yeah. don't become that jaded. The police, no matter what your race is, you know, you, we have... I never thought about it like that. I mean... Even that's actually mean, a good I never thought about it like that, bro. I mean, yeah, but that still doesn't justify what it, was done. You can see it, it still doesn't some, justify what still, was done. I can I can bug somebody over and over and over and over and over and over and non stop. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's all about how I control my emotions, who I am as a person. That person can bug me all day. But it shouldn't bother me. It shouldn't get to me to the point where I'm getting ready to do something totally out of my character. So, no, I mean... Yeah, that's... You know okay. what I'm saying? You made a good point. You made a good point. I agree with that. You made a good point. At the end of the day... At the end of the day, you're there to do a job. Mm -hmm. And if you can't handle the same issues over and over and over, my dude, you gotta find something else. Yeah. That person stole out of the candy store twice this week, <laughs> three times this week, four times this week. Same person, same person, same person. Okay. At it's some still point, not justified to like right. I, harm right. somebody. Right. At this point, okay, what can we do to make sure that this happens? Can we help him out versus trying to keep locking him up and yeah. putting him through the system? Hey, can we try to get this man some help? Can we put him into like a after school program? If that and, that, and that's another thing, like when it comes to Whatever. police officers, go ahead, go ahead. You was nah, there? I was just saying like if that person's in school or that person is just out of school, whatever the case may be, what can we do to 
get this person help versus trying to put them in and out. The whole per the whole person purpose of being a police officer is to protect and serve. Yeah. Not, you know what I'm saying, just be irritated and wake up oh uh, uh, wake up one morning and be like, Oh well, I'm tired of this issue, I'm gonna do something about it and put things in my in my own hands and, and try to make a difference by taking this person off the street and potentially killing them because I'm tired of seeing the same thing over and over. That's not that's not serving. That's not protecting the community. That's making it worse. And that's not instilling any type of trust between officers and civilians. So and, and nothing with officers. Um, I I I wish a lot of officers thought the way that you thought. But then again, like I said, like I'm not bashing officers, but I do feel like some officers should be able to um like help somebody out because not everybody deserves to be in jail. Not everybody deserves to have a speeding ticket. Not everybody deserves to do this and deserve to do that. People make mistakes, we all are human. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, you know what I'm saying? We may go to the store, we may steal this time, that time, this time, that time. We may do it over and over again, but to be honest, it could be that one officer that could be like a father figure to mm -hmm. that to that little boy that stole from the candy store because maybe he don't have parents that's raising him up in the house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because not everybody grows up with two parents. Maybe he's dealing with stuff in the house. Maybe right. his parents ain't got no food. Maybe his parents ain't got no money, so he got to make a way for his mama mm -hmm. and, or her. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying in general, but maybe that officer shouldn't be, you know, so thirsty to hurt somebody or do this and do that to somebody when they could just talk to that person and just help them out and see what's really going through their mind. Everybody fight demons. Sir. You know what I'm saying? Everybody fight things. And, like, it's always a spiritual battle each and every day. Mm -hmm. We always go through something. Mm -hmm. But come on, man. That's... Oof. Have to be integrated all together with the community. And it doesn't have to be community policing, but we all have to understand each other more. I think cultural competency would be very helpful. Like, that's my issue. Whether or not the foundations of the police force was or still it was racist now we can change that but it starts with cops like at the end of the day it's the police it's the bad police officers that are our issue not all police officers but the bad police officers we need to vet them out and the good police officers we need to you know encourage them to be amongst the community how do we vet them out by making the police unions accountable because i feel like that demographic of officers they're actually making things a lot worse for the other officers that are actually just trying Absolutely. to do their to do their job. I think that we need to get some type of real accountability that I don't think the police should be policing themselves. So when those cops that aren't doing, upholding their oath, they can be properly removed instead of getting all of these passes. The bad police officers, I hate the term like the bad apple. It's like, no, you're a faulty grenade. Like you're ruining your whole department reputation. I feel like I was held up to higher standards working at Whole Foods sometimes. I got three chances out. But like Derek had so many 17 reports. 17 George reports. Floyd. There was reports that cut the, what the, the, the brother's name is? Chavon had 18 complaints filed against him before he killed Floyd. Right. Oh, this oh, this was the guy that um yeah, they're, they're, Oh, okay, 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 okay. But right. here's the thing though. What's up? Why does it need to be 18? To the point where shouldn't that be already a red flag? Shoot, by ten, you should already be trying to boot this man up out of here. Now, let me tell you something. With the George Floyd, I, what happened to him was tragic. I'm not doubting that. The reason why I don't like the situation so much is because people held this man George Floyd up to the standard, as in if he did something crazy for this country, as if he did something crazy for America. What happened to him was very tragic. It was. You know what I'm saying? I don't wish that on my worst enemy. I don't wish that on nobody. I don't wish murder anything on nobody. But what I'm saying is people held this man as an idol to the point where it, they made him his own statue. Well, we don't even do this for the people that serve in our country. Yeah. I, I mean, let's be real. We don't even do it for the people that serve in our country. The people that's fighting out there every single day, that's going to war, that's doing this, that's waking up at this time of day, that's fighting for the country. We don't even support them. They get one day. They get one day. George Floyd died. People was through the roof. It was crazy. It was crazy. The LGBT community, people support the LGBT community like crazy because they, they be who you are, be who you are. But we can't even give a month to God. We can't even give one month to uh, freaking uh, what? The people that's the, uh, the um, damn, what's the, uh, what's it called? The veterans. Right. We can't even get, we can't even get one month to them. 
can't get one month for God, but we get a whole month to the LGBT community. Like they did something for this country too. But that's a whole nother topic. Come on, man. What? But my whole thing though, like, why why does it need to be 18 complaints? Right. Why did it have to get up to 18 complaints? Like, I understand that, yeah. Come on, man. Like, it it should have been, he should have been out before he even been, getting, yeah, before this third. I you mean, know, third strike you the out. Third strike, yeah, right. It's Bow, hello. You need to get back to those one, two, three strikes you out yeah. type of thing because at the, at the end of the day, if you're talking about, like he said, what can we do? to weed them out. Okay, cool. That number does not need to be 18. Yeah, that number needs not. to be three. You're right. It, it George is. Floyd would be still here and alive had that number been, been eight, like, been three complaints versus 18 complaints. Yeah. That means you already know that this dude, you're sending out each and every day to go do his job. Now you know what type of person that you're sending out there. He's getting ready to snap at any moment. He just so happened to snap on George Floyd and it shouldn't have been 18. Like, come that's on. True. You talking about weeding it out? Okay, three. That's it. Three strikes you out. Done. Move around. Simple as that. It's like, get him out of there. What are you guys doing? <coughs> do you think police officers, and I genuinely am curious, do you think they should get paid more? I think police officers should get paid more. I also think police officers should do less. Why do I get sent to um, all of the mental health cases. Why do I get sent I agree. to all of these things? Now, I'll tell you why I get sent to them, is because we'll- They just had, they just had, <coughs> um, I don't know if it's for Illinois, I don't even, I think it's as a whole. I think now when you get called for a mental health case, they have their own mental health hotline that you can call now. Right. So like when people go through a mental health crisis, they don't call 911, they, they, they call this 10 digit, uh, mental health um, hotline literally it just was put up now I think a couple of days ago uh, where that's that's a thing now so police officers don't have to worry about getting those type of calls when actually those people with mental health need to talk to somebody who is dealing with mental health you know what I'm saying so yeah, yeah um, to that point all right stop sending the police there and then something horrible and tragic is going to happen and they're going to say why didn't we have a cop there do you think we need to have different divisions like mental health and just other you know or maybe even specific police that are just for the schools like do you think that that would help with a lot of the issues no we do have specialized police officers in certain things but if we keep specializing and we get so compartmentalized that I can't go, I'm right across the street from you when oh, you're screaming you're for saying. help. Yeah, that's not what I do. Got to go find the guy that deals with screaming women or, or whatever it is. My name is Jimmy and I am a retired police officer. I'm not going to tell you that there are no racists on the police department. I don't think blacks were historically treated fairly under the law. I think that we have made great progress great strides i think uh we have to continue i just feel like people like if you're if you're uh in a police department and you have your partner i think you should be teamed up with people who okay my job is to protect and serve but then amongst other things okay i can deal with mental health issues i can deal with domestic violence i can deal with mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so right. boom i deal with that then my partner deals with XYZ. So that way we won't have a thing where, oh, but that's not my job, so can't do it. No, 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 no. I think everybody should, should be be really vetted in that. If they're going to do that, then yes, they should. Take I think it. every job should be like that. I think every job should be trained in every as like, even fast food. Like, I feel like everybody should be trained on cashier, cook this, cook that. Like, I feel like everybody should be trained in every job on every position at every level. Cause, kind of like how you are at work. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we should be trained on like, man, I feel like regular employees should be trained on manager positions mm -hmm. because it's just good to know and it's good to even have, even on like resumes or anything like that, even when you go to a higher paying job, it's like, at least you know, okay, I did this at my last job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we go in from working as an employee to working as another employee. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I feel like every job should be specialized in every, no, in every no. aspect. If they talk about, oh yeah, what's your experience at this job or what's your experience? Like, 
Well, I don't know. I was doing this the whole time. I was doing this the whole time. Exactly. It's like I don't have an experience. Everybody should be specialized in something. Even when managers don't show up or anything like that, when it comes we to regular jobs, experience that. Exactly. We, you know, we should be experienced to know, like, okay, I know what they do, so I could be able to be the manager for the day exactly. because I know exactly what my manager. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Continue to get better, but I also think we probably see racism to this day in places where it maybe isn't. I sometimes wish I was a different race. Uh, mm. Y'all better than that. Ooh. Oh, you. Wow, that's Wait, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. That's crazy. She black? She biracial, I think. Oh, biracial, oh, she biracial, okay. I'd say not that's so crazy. much these days, but definitely 100% when I was a kid, I wish I was white. I grew up with my white mom. I didn't see my black side of my family after a certain point. I grew up in a small town. I was often the only student of color, definitely the only black kid. And I had this kinky hair. I couldn't figure out how to work with it and everybody also would call me an Oreo. It was always just being Dang. othered, and so. I thought being called a monkey in school was bad. Imagine being called an Oreo. Oh, cause she's white. Kids are so clever. Kids are so clever. I, it's me, bro. <laughs> kids are so clever. Who comes up with that? Terrible though. That's why you like an Oreo. Like who, who comes, it's so lame, but it's just so clever. That's being a kid, you know, you just want to fit in. And for me, I wanted to be white. I just wanted to look like my mom, wanted the nice straight hair, I just wanted to feel like included. Yeah, I like I remember in elementary school, like I was thinking, no man is ever gonna like me because I freaking look like this. And I just remember hating my hair because as soon as puberty hit, it was just, it just blew up. And, and people kept on asking, do you even need a pillow to sleep at night? I'm like, I can't stand these questions. I can't do this. I'm Jordan and I am biracial. I think being biracial is definitely like living in the in-between because culturally, yes, I grew up white and I completely know that. Like I was raised by my white mother, but then there's also a part where race is perceived and it's what people put on you and how they respond to you in your everyday life. It's so interesting because I grew up in predominantly non-black communities. And for some reason, still like being the, the minority at home in the family, as well as in school and in the world, I, I was always so proud to be black. I actually really yearned to be around other black people. So thankfully in college, that was an experience where even though we made up a small community, I was still able to, okay, this is, this is like people look like me. I was in the, uh, the military for six years. And I was usually the only Jew in my battalion. And I think that isolation produced a sort of pride and understanding of who I am um, and where I come from, so. I have never uh, uh, wanted to be anything different than what I was, but that's because I really never thought about it. And to, to your all's point, maybe, I don't know, but maybe people treated you that way because there, now, there is. I, I'm not gonna lie. When I was a kid, I, I didn't want to be Mexican. I did. No, no, I'm dead serious because, bro, Mexicans had the, the curly hair. They had the, like, they waves were so nice and I, women love them. So I want, I really wanted to be Mexican. I didn't want to be white, but I mean, that was just me as a kid. I just, of course, I like being, I love being black. I love being black and I love my skin tone. I'm actually mixed. I'm mixed with uh, black, Mexican. Yeah, black and Mexican, that's it. So I'm mixed with black, Mexican, and black. I think, <laughs> black, Mexican, black. I think to your point, I think it all matters. I, mean, I think it all depends on what you want to be that race for. And I guess right. in your sense, okay, yeah, the good hair, things like that. But yeah. yeah Miles was, was, was definitely the good hair. I, I wanted to be Mexican because I seen all the Mexicans with the nice, fluffy, curly hair. Yeah. The guys walking around with straight ways. The ladies like, oh, can I touch your hair? Right. Yeah, that's right. why, but I love my hair now. Is this sense of wanting something that I haven't ever had before. I'd love to have a Lamborghini. You, you know what I mean? It's different than any other car I've ever had. It's different than what I grew up with. I think personally for me, I mean, I was actually adopted by white parents and very diverse family. I think six out of the eight of us are all adopted, all Dang. different races. I kind of have my own Dang. story apart from, from everyone else. And the same for everyone else that was adopted in my family. They have their own story. I always had pride in it, but at the same time, I, my parents are my parents, no matter the color of their skin, it's the people who raised me. And they, they raised me just to not look at it through the lens of race and 
that's what I've always done, and I never wanted to change my race at all. I'm Joshua, and I'm black. I've never experienced racism. I've experienced stuff from people from my own race. I grew up in a white family by white parents. I was constantly called whitewashed. It upset me, but I didn't like it. He experienced things from his own race. Come on, man. It's me. Being black in America, to me, is just being an American in America, just like any other person. White privilege exists. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. I mean, America was founded by white people, for white people at the time. All of the institutions were designed to benefit white people. So, I mean, of course, white privilege lingers into society today. You can't deny that. Where I would argue with you just a little bit is I think we throw out the term white privilege uh, far too often for things that aren't necessarily white privilege. I've got to agree with you completely on that one. I think there's generational white privilege for sure. You said but I think now it's almost used as a reason to not try as hard. If we start stop you doing that, just really like work for it and not use white privilege as an excuse, then we could really get somewhere as a black, in the black community. I would respectfully disagree. Mm -hmm. Like all of that is true to an extent. Mm -hmm. Like I graduated university during the pandemic, the height of it. I ha went abroad for university. I got two degrees. I graduated with honors, learned to speak two languages. I should have been able to get a job right away, right? No. It took me nine months before I was able to get a job, had to go completely outside of my field. But then when I looked at all of my white colleagues who were in my program, all of them were hired immediately. I need to introduce you to my daughter. She's white. It took her a long time. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying and just she didn't get I was gonna say that too. I mean, how do you know that that was more so racially motivated exactly. or anything? Like, yeah. dog. <laughs> Now, now, don't get me wrong. White privilege does exist in like some places. Okay, it does. You know, I'm not not saying it don't, but what I am saying is that sometimes black people look at well, I look at my white people and they and it took them. They got a job instantly and it was all in the same program, but it took me nine months. It's like me, a racist thing. <laughs> It's not everything is racially motivated. Not, not every single thing. You can't assume. For crying out loud, bro, we live in a freaking predominantly black, I mean, predominantly white neighborhood. Exactly. If my landlord would have been like, nah, you black, I'm going to give it to the next man. And he's white. Bro, okay, yeah, we know why I didn't get the apartment. But man, no, nah, man, like I'm not, I'm not about to use every single issue to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it can't. I'm black, so that's the reason why I didn't get the apartment. No, nah, man, like, no, 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 no. No, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. This white, this white girl and this, and this Tesla, she wanted to park next to me, but she went to go park next to another white person because in the same felt, car as me because she felt like I was going to rob her. You felt more safe. <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. I'm like, come on, bro. Okay, I'm not going to use that as like, stop. Oh, why you want to park next to me? Because I'm black. Like, like exactly. Come on, man. Like, right. Not everything is racially motivated. It's not, like, bro. People boom. just, bro, people just. Boom. Like, let's not do this right now. It's, this is the world that we live in, though. Everybody feel like everything is racially motivated. If white, if a white person get this job and a black person don't, that's racially motivated. If a yeah. white person don't want to use, don't want to use the same, don't want to use the stall next to you, and they go to the other stall, that's racially motivated. They use it, ah, oh, they don't want to use next to me because I see black legs under the stall. Like, come on, man. I just want to go to the next stall. Bro. I just want to go to the last stall. I don't want nobody to see my feet. It's not that deep. <laughs> it's not. Get her job and what her degree is in either. I respect that, but my point is saying, me comparing myself to the white students who were directly in my position, they're successful, I'm not. This country was founded but, up. And, no, and, and another thing is that God got different plans for everybody. Right, you just, you, you, you just can't assume. God has different plans for everybody. You can't assume. You really this is, can't, bro. Like, look, this thing, this thing, God will guide your steps. He, like every every door that closed on you does not mean that you won't be successful in the future. Or, That's just God's protection. Or that it was race behind it. Exactly, that. it was race behind it. Like, no, it's not. Like, it's not. Everybody has a different plan in life. That was probably your plan, but you did, probably didn't put God, God in that plan. You know what I'm saying? My sister has to be the highest, like she is so qualified in a lot of things. 
So the fact that some of these jobs would be like, oh, nah, we don't see you as, you know, a good fit for the program. And mm -hmm. she, then she gets on why. And then she tells me the why. And it's like, okay, that's the reason why you didn't get the job. But she's qualified in a lot of things. But she just not qualified for that position. Not because she was black. She just wasn't qualified. So <laughs> Exactly. So I mean, you probably just wasn't qualified, you qualified for that, for that <laughs> position. Like, come on. Exactly, bro. Like, dog. Come on. Upon white people coming and then putting in act Jim Crow and other laws saying that if you are not white, you are genetically inferior. You are not even a person. And some of those laws are still, and those systems are still in place today. Two things can be true. You can have had a very hard time. Privilege is not just limited to white people, but to say white privilege doesn't exist from a historical context to me is respectfully absurd. Something that I learned about recently is um, the privilege that exists in the medical field, specifically relating to the birthing process um, in giving epidurals. There was a, f a study that's recently, or was debunked, that said that black people have a higher tolerance for pain, which then has been falsely used by people who help support births in being hesitant to provide the epidurals for black women giving birth. A lot of women die in childbirth. I don't know the exact statistics. So Three I times more likely black women are to die. Thank you. The fact that I will be taken seriously, more seriously than a black woman in my place if I should be giving birth at some point, I see that as just an absolute privilege. My name is Bryn and I just graduated and I'm currently gaining hours to becoming a licensed therapist. As a therapist in, in school, we're taught to approach things with what's called cultural humility. Cultural humility is being curious and instead of trying to have all the answers, working collaboratively with the client to kind of understand where they're coming from. I have been fetishized for my race. You know, the standard one. Oh, you're pretty for a black girl. I'm like, that's not a compliment. That's so weird to say. And like one of the go-to pickup lines for men, they're like, oh my God, what are you? I'm like, this is not cute. I'm tired of having this conversation. This is lame. Yes, I know I have green eyes, hazel eyes. Like, let's move on. I think black women in particular are just extremely sexualized and fetishized. Every day I go out, and making sure that my outfit is, you know, okay, because I don't want to draw certain attention. The way I wear my hair, if it's in an afro, if it's in puffs, if it's in braids, I'm going to get treated differently. Um, yeah, every single day something happens. Um, so there's a, a form of positive anti-Semitism where Jews are perceived as like being put together, coming from money, um, being doctors, lawyers, and you know, women are attracted to those sort of things. And also too, like all Jewish men are circumcised. Some women have that preference. Um, so I've definitely experienced it, but it's, I feel like it's a sort of subtle, trivial thing. Like it, it never really bothered me, um, but it's, it's a card nonetheless. Yeah, I've had experiences in uh, high school, college. You know, people ask me to stop me, mainly women. Like, oh, are you Egyptian? Are you black in this or black in that? There's always something, there's always black in something else. And um, I'll you know, let them know what I am and they'd be like, oh, that's exotic or something crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, my name is Dino and I am biracial. I don't want people to think that I'm like split between being black or white. Uh, I acknowledge that I'm mixed and I'm biracial, but for the most part growing up, I was always considered black. I consider myself black, my family did as well. So. I don't think we should live in a colorblind society, but I also don't think we should stay stuck and feel like we can't move forward and still thrive and accomplish things because of our skin color and where we live in America. I feel like I'm spending way too much time dealing with other people's problems. How do I set boundaries with them? Would you like me to... I would just have a question for everyone who stepped forward. I'm just curious what, how that's like? What's it like? Exhausting. It sounds exhausting. Yeah, I think black women historic. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I just got a question for everybody. What is this like? What is it like? 
What is it like? How it? How does she it feel? Said it with a straight face. Bro. Said it with a straight. Face. How does it feel? How? Why? Like, just why? How does it feel? Like honestly, bro, I don't find. Honestly, I, I guess I have been, but to be honest, it's like it never bothered me. No, I haven't. Nobody never came up to me and said, "Oh my gosh, you're cute to be a black." A black man, like no, nobody ever really came up to me like that. Like no, um, no, no. people did ask me, like you know, was I mixed before or things like that? Uh, Cause when I was young, like when I was younger, I looked white. Okay, I looked super. I was super light skinned. I was super light, um, but I just was in the sun a lot, so that's how I got a tan and became, you know, got, I'm brown skinned now. But at that time, I was really light, and I did have people ask me, like you know, am I mixed with black, white? You know, what am I mixed with? But it ain't really bothered me, man. I actually like when people ask me. Berkeley have a really interesting relationship with desirability. Culturally, it seems as we're not desired. And then when we are, we're being fetishized. So it's like, okay, we're usually not desired, but now we are. Am I supposed to lean into this fetishization? I think just being a woman, you know, we deal with certain things every day. Specifically being a black woman, being fetishized, it's interesting because if I, especially in my industry, because I'm there to work and be professional, I'm just super professional and I don't give any attention to that at all, that kind of energy, then I'm an angry black woman. So I think that it's just really... Um, you can't win. It does feel like that. So yeah, that you can't win sometimes. Yeah, and there's also a flip side to it. It's like, uh, for me specifically, okay, I'm light-skinned amongst majority dark-skinned people and people will deem me or deem other light-skinned people as a certain way, as either weaker or less than or just like, Okay, you're lighter than, so we're going to be so pro-black that we're never going to, you know, consider you as one of us, you know, you're just other. Well, that, like, touches just on beauty standards in the black community, and that's colorism. Like, I've even been told, you're beautiful, you're not black, you know? It's just like these oh, little things. Yeah. Or you must be mixed with something, yes. right? Yeah. 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 My name's Christina, and I'm biracial. I have been fetishized uh, for the color of my skin on both sides. Um, you know, black men will be really into me because I'm light skinned or other men um, who are not black might be into me because I am that black girl, but maybe I'm not too black. And that, for whatever reason, is appealing. Being deemed as exotic or something other is just very problematic. And that plays into a lot of issues of colorism within the black community at large. We need reparations for the black community. I don't think people need like individualized like paychecks like, like I don't think that's gonna like work but I think pouring funds into communities who could really use it building jobs there more education there like more opportunities would do so much like that's how I see it should be anytime that black communities in the US try to you know pull themselves up by the bootstraps, they were attacked. Like, um, I think it was in Tulsa, they bombed the city. Um, Black Wall Street, it was completely destroyed. So again, um, something needs to be done. When the Civil War ended, there was a representative from Ohio, I can't remember his name, um, but he was a radical Republican um, and advocated for the phrase 40 acres and a mule for every emancipated slave. So there was supposed to be reparations, and there never was. And I think especially as a Jewish person, I mean, Jews received reparations for the Holocaust and are still receiving them. And in my mind, there's no amount of money that will ever undo the wrong of the Holocaust. So that you could, all the money in the world will never make it right. But um, I think the idea in principle of reparations is good. Logistically, I don't know how it would happen. Hold on. I just want to see what they all got to say, to be honest. Because I, I got something to say, but I just want to make sure, like... Yeah, all right, all right. I just wanted to say the reason I stayed back was because I wasn't entirely sure what was meant by reparations. But your example of the Holocaust, I would say that I agree. Similar reason, um, when I think of reparations, I think of something similar to a stimulus check. My worry is, with a lack of like financial literacy, will we actually make strides? That's my... So I would love the idea of investing money into programs in underserved communities, something like that. But I do have a fear that even if we did have the money without that generational knowledge of how to take care of our finances, that it would just deplete and defeat the purpose. Okay. Yeah, so... It doesn't necessarily need to be a physical 
like she said, I mean, just a lack of uh, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be in the form of a check, but it could be in the form of a, a community center uh, in our predominantly black neighborhoods that some of our kids can go to to be able to. But 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 you know what's crazy? They say this, but black people tear down their own communities. That, that's true. It's true. Right. Black yeah. people yeah. tear down their own communities. It's a lot of black neighborhoods, and the way they look, the way they look, is because of the people that's in that neighborhood that's tearing it down themselves. Perfect example. Back home, we had a Walmart. Uh, yeah, we had a Walmart, and and I lived in a predominantly black uh, community. We had a Walmart. We couldn't have a Walmart because people would go in and out stealing, them, or stealing stuff, nonstop. So as far as uh, as a community and being able to thrive and be able to grow, we tried that and we couldn't do it. it we can't do it with each other. That's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> it's no unity in the. It's no unity in the black community. So it, we it's no about, man. Black people can't. Oh, well, not black people. But man, we can't have nothing nice. Well, I mean, start with the people that that you know <laughs> that's still in it. Exactly. But, we we can't have nothing nice because of our own race. Our own race do this do this stuff to ourselves. Like I told my sister, and we had we pretty much had. Uh, same point point of view is is that it's not that we can't have nothing nice we need to go back to the root of the problem like in regards to raising up your ch your child in the way that they should go like it starts in the home it does <laughs> you know what i'm saying it really starts in the home like if you know stealing bad why are we still so i'm blaming if the you, parents it's the parents fault. for real like it, it's it's in the way that we should really go in regards to um, making things run how we're supposed to run in our communities it starts at home if hey, you're, go ahead, go ahead. No, if, if you're you know teach if, if you're a parent and you're leading by an example your kids see that trust me they're gonna do the same thing exactly. that you're doing if you cursing they go curse i said in my video i said i said in my instagram i said you are who you hang around right. your kids right. you will mean. become exactly who you are because they're around you 24 7. you start to become a, a product of your environment and that's not in, in some cases and for a lot of cases that's not the case um and, and like for me personally like i said i was in a predominantly black neighborhood but a lot of things that a lot of people did that i just wasn't you know going forth with however the reason why i didn't do that is because I had two solid parents who've been married for 30 plus years that's mm -hmm. been instilled, you know, these core values in me to be like, hey, this is wrong, this is right, this is how you treat somebody, this is not how you treat somebody. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, people be, and I've had this happen be before. I had this one white guy, he was like, yeah, man, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but. You know, you don't act black. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, like, what does that even mean? I don't know what that means, bro. Like, at the end of the day, I am who I am because of how I was raised. Yeah. Not because my brother right here is black, and he's doing what he's doing. No, I'm. I am. I am who I am because I was raised to be a certain way, right. and that means treating everybody with the same level of respect as I would my own brother. So, no matter the race, no matter the color, don't matter. So, you know, that's just, you know, my point of view. And my point of view on it is, you know, people ask me why I don't, why I don't support like black businesses or black owned businesses. The reason I don't is because it's like anytime the experience that I done had with so many different black businesses, so many, and so many different black communities is that it's so not, it's not professional. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying every black person is not professional. It's a lot of black people that's professional. I'm professional. He's professional. My wife is professional. Every it's a lot of people that are professional that's black, right? But my thing is, it's like I, I try to support these businesses and it's like they they get over on me. They get over on their own race. You know what I'm saying? Like like the dude that fixed my car. Charged me fifteen hundred for some struts. And and, and they're not even fixed. I drive my car, I hear knocking. The stress is not even fixed right. That's what I'm saying. They get over but on their own race, what, their own community. And I'm trying to support the community. And what did he, what did he say? He's like, hey man, I'm gonna make sure you straight, man, because you a brother. It, that's that. exactly where he was there. <laughs> that's exactly where he said, I'm gonna make sure you straight, man, because you a brother. 
I'll treat my brothers right. I'm gonna I mean, make sure you, and he, make sure the job is done correctly. Exactly. I understand I'm a brother, but make sure the job done correctly, bro. Like, come on, man. <laughs> brother or not, you still got a job to do. Exactly. My point. One, two, three. Even if that were to happen, though, I still think that that would still be the right step. You know, we'll give these people the funds or whatever. We'll give them our promise. And if they float or sink or whatever, that's on them. At least, like, we as a country took the right step. I am all for money going to the community. I am for that because that w the communities right now are the way they are because of things in the past. But to give out checks to individual people, there's a difference between learning from the past and then still getting caught up in the past. I mean, if, if I had a time machine, I could go back in time when, and be like, hey, you never gave us the um, 40 acres of a mule. I would be all for that and I would get on that for the people who were affected and actually went through slavery. But in today's age, like no, no one's experienced it and gone through it. Yes, the communities are um, taking hit by that, but uh, so I mean, I've, I've never. You don't think your ancestors experienced slavery? I, I think they do, but I haven't. I have. That's my. That's why I be trying to tell people. Yes, my ancestors experienced slavery, but I have not. And we keep going off what our ancestors done. But what about us? We can't we can't look at all white people the way we look at them because of what they because first of all the white people that we look at a certain way they didn't even experience like they wasn't even in they wasn't even probably a lot of them wasn't even born and but we look at them with so much disrespect. A lot of it has to do with uh, generational generational mindsets. So you know, long list. Oh yeah, my. Great, 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 great grandfather. I didn't even meet that nigga. Slave. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like before, I didn't great, even great, meet him. Great, 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 great grandfather was a white slave owner. Boom, 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 all the way to the 21st century. Now I don't like black people. All of a sudden, they're like, you, like you don't even know what you like. You My just, uh, only reason why you just saying you don't know what you like because your family, it's been a generational thing. But it's like my well, great 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 grandmother. She was in slavery, and I just don't like what she went through. Like I didn't see it. I don't know what the woman went through. I didn't even meet the woman. I'm not being disrespectful, but it's the truth. I'm tired of people bringing up slavery, bringing up this, and bringing up that, and they give it an excuse for black people. Black people are the way they are because of how the household they the household they was put in. That's why a lot of black people are the way they are because of what they was taught and because of the way they was raised. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. That's it. I'm not I'm not this way because of my ancestors. White people are not racist because of what their ancestors did. Like no, it's all what they learned in the house. Bro, we are in 2022. You can still be in a I mean, a white person can still be in a predominantly white or be in a white household but still be taught a certain way to be like, "Hey, I'm going to treat everybody the same. I'm exactly. going to treat everybody with respect." Exactly. That has nothing to do with what XYZ did back in that time. It, it, it's a Bible verse. It's, it's, it's a Bible verse. Oh, I'm gonna put it on the screen. It's a Bible verse that says something about um, the way you teach your kids. Something like that. It's something like that. I hope I can find it. I believe there is a Bible verse like that. But it all starts with what you are taught. It's in the home. I'm not gonna teach my kids certain things. I'm just, exactly. I'm just not. And but at the end of the day, I can only go off of what I, how I was and how I was raised. And and, and I just gotta teach them the same way that I was taught. I've never been in it, so why should I get a check from somebody else who never put it? The, the, it should be, it should, you should be going way, way, like way back. So what about the people who are the descendants of the slave owners who are still reaping the financial benefits of your ancestors who slaved in those fields for literally generation after generation? You don't think that during that time, your great grandfather could have been building a business that could be flourishing? I didn't meet the nigga, I don't know. I didn't meet him. I didn't meet my great grandfather. I don't know the man. I don't even know his name. I didn't meet my great grandfather. It's hard, it's hard to say, but I can say the same thing about my parents and them, or, or not even my parents, but your just, parents were slave. Huh? Your parents was a slave. No, no, no. I'm saying I can oh. say the same thing in regards to she was saying like could her, could his grandfather's reap the benefits of those, those funds and and be a businessman. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can say the same thing about, you know, somebody else right now. You know, not being financially literate. I mean, yeah, had they been financially literate, then you know it would be a little easier for a lot of people not to you know struggle things like that. So it's like it's hard to even say 
what somebody would have done or what they would have been able to accomplish. But again, it all goes back to you and what you're willing to do and what you're willing to go ahead and, and, and push for, you know, with in right. regards to funds and being financially literate. We can all, we can always change our cycle and, and how we were raised and how we were taught. Because in a lot of cases we were taught wrong, but it's up to you if you want to change that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Now, and you would have a multi-million dollar franchise as they do off the backs of others. You don't think that deserves some rectification for you in the present time? I, to, to be honest, like, no, because I, again, it's something that happened in the past. Again, I never, I haven't experienced it. I, I'm doing fine right now. I'm doing fine. And I'm not going to be all upset over somebody else's ancestors who I, I don't even know who enslaved my ancestors. I, I, don't, I don't need it. I have no reason to have it. So for me personally, I'm not upset about it, but I do feel my grandfather on his side, they were the first family in the state of Texas to actually file for reparations. And for me, I'm succeeding in spite of that. But to this gentleman's point, when the government says, hey, we're gonna do a thing, obviously the government in itself saw the weight in the air of the wrong, just as the German government did. I think if I wanna buy 90 gold chains, that's my business. I think it would be unfortunate, but I think that if I'm entitled to something, I think it should be in the same fashion that the people of Jewish descent got it. I think it should be in the same fashion that the people uh, that are Japanese descent got it. So you might think it doesn't affect you, but overall, I think that uh, we have been greatly impacted by slavery, even up to current. I just choose not to focus on it nonstop so it doesn't become something that holds me back. But I definitely think it's something that we are entitled to. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> mm, I mean, I get what she's saying. I mean, but why did it have why does it have to get to that point for the government to be like, oh yeah, I messed up for what happened back in the 1800s? Like, it, you know, but I mean, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying though, but hey, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts on that. Y'all know I want to interact with y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think on this situation. I love y'all, man. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Once again, follow your boy on IG. Follow my boy. You know what I'm saying? Rob on IG too. And without further ado, man, it's been your boy the pan. I love y'all. God bless. Stay blessed.